Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name's Frank and I'm glad that you're here. And today I'm especially glad if you're one of my subscribers that's using a Mac because I'm going to talk about how we can work with Microsoft Teams on a Mac and I'm going to answer some subscriber questions. So I've been getting some questions around, hey, you know, like the video, Frank, thank you very much, but I don't have backgrounds. Or, hey, I like the video, thank you very much, but I can't share a program. So there are three different areas on a Mac environment that you need to make sure that you have dialed in so that you can use Microsoft Teams effectively. Well, two of those areas are universal to any installation of Teams, and they have to do with your IT department or with your membership within a team. And I'll talk about those in this video. And then the third one is specific to a Mac computer where we have to go into our systems preferences and make a little change there. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. And if you are a Mac user, I have been an Apple consultant. I am a Microsoft certified trainer. So it really, for me, it's all about learning and technology, whether it's a Mac, whether it's Windows, whether you're using Unix or even some sort of device that has its own uh, proprietary operating system, which is usually a derivative of Linux. That's another story. Comment down below if you'd like to see more videos on any of those operating systems. I'm always happy to do anything that helps you be more effective with learning and technology. And if you want more tips, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And liking this video helps other people describe it. It really helps the channel out a lot if you hit the like button. So please hit the like button. And of course, share with colleagues that might benefit. Let's go have a look at some of those subscriber questions for working with Teams on a Mac. Here I am on my Mac computer. So I use an Apple computer and I use a Windows computer. For me, it really doesn't matter what the computer is. What's interesting for me is to make sure that I can deliver teaching online. So I have had a lot of questions regarding some of the settings that relate to Teams on the Mac computer. So in a previous video, I showed you how you could download Teams. And if you go into Teams, you'll be able to go into, let's just change that and go to Microsoft Teams here. So Microsoft Teams app, you can see that it's starting up. And there's a lot of different things that I want to be able to do here. So for example, if I go into the general room here, I want to be able to do a meeting. And you'll notice that the meeting, I'll turn off my webcam actually, but we have the, the webcam here, I want to meet now. You'll notice it doesn't give me as many options as with the Windows version. So for example, I can't start it with the muted audio. But if I go into Meet Now, I can go ahead and I can mute my audio. I've got my webcam muted. And if I go into the ellipse here, you'll see that I can do a lot of things such as going in, turning and showing on, show the background effects. I can go in and I can start recording. And when I go to record, I'm now recording the meeting and you can see that I'm starting to record it. It gives the notification that I'm recording. Now, a few of my subscribers, I'm gonna stop recording here. A few of my subscribers have said, hey, wait a second, when I go into the ellipse here, I'm not getting the backgrounds or I'm not getting the recording options. There are a couple of reasons that this could be the situation for you. One, if you're a participant in the meeting, then you'll have one of two different sort of roles. You can be the organizer, which I am, which gives me all of those permissions. But if I go into some of my users here, I can go in and you'll notice I can pull them in. But let's actually, I'm going to stop the meeting here and I'll just show you the team members here. So if I go into this team here and I manage the team, you'll notice that these members are all members of this team. It is possible to add people, make them an owner, which will give them some more elevated privileges. And it is also possible to add a member. And I'm just going to add in a different account that I have here. Actually, there's one right there. So I'm going to grab myself and I'm going to add myself in as a guest. So when I add myself in as a guest, you'll notice that I now appear as a guest. And that's going to limit my ability to do certain things on this team. So there are organizers and owners, there are members, and there are guests. So you have to make sure that you kind of know which one you are. It is also possible that your IT department could have limited the permissions. But there is yet another area that you need to be aware of. If I go into my, <coughs> excuse me, my system settings or system preferences, underneath security and privacy, you'll see that when I go in here, there's a number of different things on my computer, such as my camera. And you'll notice that my camera, if I scroll down here, 
Microsoft Teams has permission to use the camera. And my microphone, Microsoft Teams, has permission to use my microphone. If I go into something like full disk access, you'll notice Microsoft Teams, if I scroll here, is grayed out. It does not have permission to have full access to my disks. If I want it to, so I'll go in and authenticate. So I authenticate with administrative credentials. I can now give Microsoft Teams full disk access. And so I'll go here and I can choose to quit Microsoft Teams in order for that to take effect. And now the next time I start it, it will have full disk access. It's also very important that Microsoft Teams is going to have access to my files and folders. Well, if it has full disk access, it'll also get access to my uh, files and folders. So you can see here that it has full disk access. I can also control what it has access to. Why is this files and folders and the full disk access important? If I want to share out a program, I actually have to be able to access that program. If I want it to be able to do screen recording, for example, I have to have it checked there as well. So there are three places to check. Check to make sure that you have the appropriate membership credentials. Check to make sure your IT department hasn't limited what you can do. And check your own preferences for your system to make sure that you have the appropriate permissions to go in and do some of those things. I'm going to open up Teams again. Now that I've changed it to full disk access, if I go into the Superheroes of Education, we'll go into General, I'll go into Meet. Again, I'll hide my video. So, oh, uh, there you go. I'll wave at you. So we go into Meet here. And now when I go to the Ellipse, I'll be able to do things such as uh, go in and, and um, show the device settings, go in and do the backgrounds. I can go into sharing here and you'll see that I have many different things that I can share. And that's all because I've got my permissions dialed in. Okay, my Mac users, I hope that was helpful for you and that you are going to find that useful in your own teaching. Uh, comment down below if I solve some problems for you. Comment down below if you have more problems that I can help you with. So it's always good if we can work through these things together because the end objective is making sure that we're effectively using technology to help people learn ourselves and others. And that's the whole point of this channel. Uh, to prove that, here's some more of my videos. You can go and have a look at those and subscribe, like, and we'll see you in the next videos.